GWM has moved into the $50,000 ute category with this new model. This is the GWM ute Canon XSR, and it's something of a flagship off-road specialist in the range. You're looking at a ute that's about $53,000 drive away, but that asks the question, is it worth the money? It's about seven and a half grand more than a regular ute in this range. And well, we're gonna find out in this video if it is worth it. We're gonna take it off-road to see how good it is. We're gonna take it on-road as well and do some country road touring. But also we're gonna sit in the interior and figure out what this thing is like to live with day to day. So let's have a closer look. XSR is a new top specification for the Ute Cannon range. It's priced from $52,990 drive away. So that makes it around seven and a half grand more expensive than the Canon X and six and a half grand more expensive than the blacked out Vanta spec. The Canon Ute is powered by a two liter turbocharged diesel engine, which makes 120 kilowatts and 400 Newton meters running through a ZF sourced eight speed automatic gearbox and part-time four wheel drive system. XSR picks up a front locking differential on top of the rear locker that is standard elsewhere. And it moves to a more traditional part-time four-wheel drive system, which puts it in better stead off-road, but now doesn't allow four driven wheels on the bitumen. There's even a turn assist function on this XSR, which breaks the inside rear wheel off-road for a reduced turning circle, just like a Land Cruiser 300 series. So this XSR model is about seven and a half grand more expensive than your regular top range Canon Ute. But what do you get extra for that money? Firstly, you'll notice there a snorkel, a raised air intake. That is a good thing for water crossings, but also dirt and dust driving. You've also got a metal front bumper here. It doesn't actually look like metal. It almost looks like plastic with this coating that they've put on it there, but it is metal and that is handy to have. If you're doing a bit of off-roading, that's gonna be more durable over the long run. You'll notice a camera on the front here this does have a 360 degree camera overall and this badge here it doesn't look like a gwm badge this thing in china is actually called a a poa it's like a power without the w that's the badge for that just in case you're wondering but another important thing for when you're going off-road these tires so this is a cooper all-terrain tire definitely a good upgrade for when you're going off-road although i will note these are not a light truck construction which you do get in something like a ranger raptor navara warrior or that sort of thing that means the tire is a bit stronger overall you don't get this in this case but still it's an improvement over the regular canon ute one other thing to note we do have red brake calipers on this model why I have absolutely no idea, but at least this ute does have disc brakes all round. Discs at the rear as well, instead of drums like you see in most other utes. Moving further down the side here, you do have some nice flares on the side and some meaty side steps. I've crawled under this thing and I've noticed that these actually only mount on the sills. They don't go onto the chassis rails directly, so they're probably not gonna be like a true rock slider, more of a nice side step, I suppose. Still not a bad inclusion. You also get sports bar there. I'm not a big fan of those myself. They tend to just get in the way, but there are a few extra party tricks in the back of this thing, which I'll show you when I spin this thing around. Now the business end of this Ute, and there are some good things to talk about here with this GWM. Firstly, another metal rear bumper here. Once again, it doesn't look like it, but it does offer good protection. I do like the side steps that are included in the design. And we do have two tow points here. I'm not gonna go so far as to call them recovery points, but they do look reasonably sturdy. And because there are two of them there, you could use a bridle to lighten the load a little bit in a recovery situation. There's a full size spare slung underneath there. And although there isn't a tow bar, we do have a 12 pin round wiring harness there quite interestingly, but more interesting for me is in the back here. Damped tailgate, first thing to talk about. And also we do have a spray-in tub line here, which is great when you're loading the car up like we have here. There's stuff bouncing around, but you're not actually damaging anything. That is important. But if you want to get in and access some of that gear, press this button in here, pull that out. And now you've got a handy step. So nice and easy to jump in the back. 
This is one of the major appeals of this GWM Ute, the interior. In terms of value for money, in terms of what you get, if you look at $53,000 drive away, you're looking at the base specification, even if you can get into one at all. In terms of a Toyota Hilux, Ford Ranger, Isuzu D-Max, anything that's a twin cab, auto, four-wheel drive, isn't going to match this GWM in terms of specifications and inclusions. Of course, there is the LDV, which does compete with this a little bit more head to head, but let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got an infotainment display that is pretty good. You've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto there. The operating system is a little bit clunky and slow, I suppose. It's not as slick as what you get in a Ford Ranger, for example, but in that being said, it's not too bad. Single zone climate control, you've got all your buttons here for controlling that sort of thing, and you've got a volume dial, which is really handy. Also, you'll see front and rear diff lock buttons there. That's pretty cool. We're not going to use those just yet, though. We'll get to those a little bit later. USB power outlets there. There is a 12-volt plug and a wireless charging pad there for your stuff. And cup holders are actually hiding. I do like this. You've got a little uh, storage thing there. I've got my wallet in it there at the moment, but slide that back out of the way. You've got two cup holders. Lift that up, and you've got a pretty good size central storage bin there as well. So you can absorb a fair bit of your everyday stuff in terms of driving around and that sort of thing, your wallet, your phone, and whatnot, in terms of everyday usage. And in terms of comfort, it's not too bad. These seats are heated and ventilated up front and you've got the basic six-way adjustment in terms of electric adjustment for the driver and passenger. They're pretty comfortable. You've got adjustment through the steering column as well. So in terms of longer distance driving, this isn't too bad. Build quality feels pretty good as well. I haven't had any weird rattles. There doesn't seem to be much looseness going on in terms of when you prod around in this interior. And I've got to say overall, this is a good experience, especially in comparison to the asking price. Before I jump in and show you how much space is in the back here, I want to show you a very handy party trick that this GWM Ute has. Firstly, something I haven't seen before, this Ute has a 60-40 split in terms of these seats folding forward, which is handy. But one thing I like even more, they also fold up and out of the way. So you could use this as a bit of a pseudo storage space area, which is out of the weather and secure for when you don't have passengers in. But let me just pop these down again. Just like that. Now, I'm sitting in the back of the ute and that's my seating position up front there. I'm a little bit under six foot in height overall, in case you're wondering. And legroom is pretty good. Not too bad for a dual cab ute, I reckon. And headroom is a little bit tight. You do have a sunroof here and the roof does sort of pop down a little bit in front. So if I was a little bit taller, I'd probably be banging my head a little bit more often than I would like on the roof. I've got a pop down armrest here. That's not too bad. No cup holders, however. I can fit bottles in the doors. I've got air vents there and I've got a USB power outlet and a 220 volt household plug as well that does 120 watts apparently, which is handy to have. But otherwise, for a dual cab ute, this is pretty good. GWM or Great Wall Motors, as it used to be known, has come a long way in terms of their ute offering. The previous generation ute was a fairly crude bit of gear, very cheap, but it also drove quite cheap as well, to be honest with you. This new model is quite an improvement, although it's still not perfect. We've got a turbo diesel engine here that does feel pretty torquey, fairly flexible, and it's also impressively refined, but it is let down by a throttle tune that is, in my opinion, overly aggressive for the application. Only one little press of the throttle and the thing sort of accelerates forward quite a lot makes the car feel like it's got more power than it probably does but once you keep pressing the pedal further and further you'll notice that nothing really changes and the gearbox does feel quite overly active as well at the same time this thing shifts up and down gears quite a lot it's a zf eight speed automatic it's a well-known gearbox that does shift quite smoothly and does a good job but for me the calibration just isn't there it's not good enough the ride quality is also a bit imperfect i think we've got heavier all-terrain tires here on this vehicle cooper all terrains and i think that the suspension tune hasn't been changed for this model and that has caused 
a little bit more stiffness, I think, in the ride quality overall. It doesn't handle bumps particularly well, and it can really start to bounce around a little bit on bigger hits. So it's not as compliant as others out there, and it just starts to fall behind a little bit, especially when you consider this is the most expensive ute in the GWM Canon range. It is now over $50,000, so I just feel like it is gonna compete more head-to-head -head now with things like an Isuzu D-Max, a Ford Ranger, a Toyota Hilux, and all of those just offer a better driving experience overall in comparison to this one. And it's a similar story with the steering and the dynamic feel of this GWM. Obviously, it's a four-wheel drive unit. It doesn't need to pretend to be a sports car or anything like that. But in comparison to other utes in the segment, steering is a bit on the slow and vague side. It certainly doesn't feel particularly great going through corners. It sits on the road well enough, and I think you would get used to it if this was your daily driver. But at the same time, it's still just a little bit behind the pace in that regard. All in all, I think this Ute doesn't really put a major foot wrong anywhere, but it's also a little bit behind the pace in a few segments. It's just that tuning and calibration. If GWM were to update the suspension tuning, make it a little bit softer, update the steering, and also change the tuning of the powertrain and the throttle and the gearbox, this Ute would be a really good car at a bargain price. We loaded up the GWM with 600 kilograms worth of ballast thanks to Nepean Landscape Supplies in Western Sydney. This doesn't run the vehicle all the way up to its full GVM and payload, which is 875 kilos, but it still gave us some good impressions. This suspension setup, which is unchanged from the regular Canon range, wasn't overloaded at this point and performed well enough, although it was starting to feel a little bit underdamped and could be problematic when made to handle a couple of hundred extra kilos on top of what we had. Although I've got to say, the spring rate of the ute did feel pretty good with this load on board. The peaky throttle tune that this ute has, which does feel a bit overdone when unladen, tends to pay dividends when you are loaded up and it allows you to get the most out of this two litre turbo diesel engine. Steering feels mostly unaffected and the brakes didn't feel too bad either when loaded up. Off-road, the addition of improved tyres and a locking front differential makes a big difference and takes the Canon from being, well, quite unimpressive off-road to being very solid. Full-time four-wheel drives like the Toyota Land Cruiser or Mercedes G-Class need to be triple locked for a similar result you've got here because they have a centre differential. However, because this part-time four-wheel drive system only needs two diff locks to be fully locked up, it's got zero wheel spin when rock crawling. In other words, all four wheels are turning at the exact same speed, which is amazing for off-road driving. And as good as some traction controls can be off-road these days, locking diffs still feel like you've entered a cheat code off-road. You can crawl slowly with great control, and it allows the tires to take their time to grip up and get over challenges. The bash plates on this XSR do get a bit of a workout underneath because we've got a relatively long wheelbase and the average ground clearance of the ute isn't that impressive. Also, when you get underneath, you do notice a flat design of those plates, but I've got to say, we are really glad to see some protection for that chassis mounted fuel filter underneath. Throttle calibration remains sharp and often feels too much like a hair trigger for low speed off-road situations. And while that 360 degree camera system is helpful, it does look a bit grainy and lacking in detail at times for tight maneuvers. It's twin locked, it's got tires, it's got protection and it's got a snorkel. You do get a fair bit of extra gear for the money you spend on this special edition, but when you're spending over 50 grand on a four wheel drive ute, you start to get more critical of some of those basic fundamental things. And I think that's the main weakness of this GWM. The ride quality, the steering, the ride refinement and that sort of thing just isn't up to speed. And I think in particular, the throttle response calibration and the gearbox calibration needs a bit of work. It's only that last little bit of 10%, I think, of tuning and that sort of thing where you'd get a big benefit from updating this GWM in the future. But at the moment, it's just missing a couple of little things there. Although it's gotta be said, twin locked four wheel drives, they are rare and they're also normally very expensive. Things like Land Cruiser 300 series, Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, Ford Ranger Raptor, they're all twin locked, 
but they cost a lot more money than this. So this does have a certain appeal, definitely. However, you do have to live with those compromises of just the tuning and calibration. If you want to see one of my most fun days at work ever, watch this video here. This is a Ranger Raptor in action at a racetrack. And of course, we've got this video here. It's a few years old, but you will see all the major players in the dual cab ute segment going head to head off-road.